Hey all, welcome back. I dug out the wiring loom when I was testing the lights and wipers, but while I had it out I thought I might as well see what sort of a state it was in. There's a lot of bodged wiring in here, and when I had the car on the road a bunch of stuff didn't work properly. The more I looked at it, the more I was convinced I'd be better off just redoing all the wiring rather than trying to fix this. This is 45 years old after all, I know for a fact the insulation is starting to perish in places. So I've got everything straightened out and untangled first. It looks a mess, but once it's all laid out, there's not actually all that much to it. Not compared to modern cars, anyway. Once I got everything laid out, I hooked up as many of the components as I reasonably could. As much to test the components as the wiring. It's all a bit of a lash together mess, I know, but it'll do for now. So, let's see what we've got. The horns work. <coughs> Well, one of them does anyway. The washer pump works. And of course the wiper motor works as well. The lights work too. We already know the headlights work, of course. The brake lights work. The hazard lights work, sort of. One light is out. Considering the state of the wiring at the front, I'm not really surprised. And the warning light's a bit iffy as well. The indicators seem to work, other than that one light. And the heater works. I'm going to need to do some work on that though. And the starter circuit works fine. The clock's not working for some reason. I'm going to have to investigate that. So, while it mostly seems to work, there's too many bodges, bits of tape and bad connections for me to be happy with it, so I decided I'm going to make a new one. You can buy new ones already made, but they're kind of expensive. Making my own means I can add in a few of my own modifications rather than tacking them on afterwards. Besides, it'll be fun. Probably. So I started pulling all the components off and disconnecting what I could. And then I stripped the insulation off. I kept everything together with cable ties so I didn't lose the shape of it. I'll be needing that when I build the new one. While I was doing all that, I started working on the wiring diagram. 
I needed a bigger one than what was in the manual, and as I'm going to be adding some bits, I wanted a diagram I could edit as well. So I started with the one from the workshop manual, and I made my own digital version of it. The next set was to measure all the wires, so I had an idea of what I'd need to order both for capacity and length. I've been dying to find out what's under all this tape. Turns out, not much. Just some random wires that go nowhere. I'm sure it made sense at one point. But before I throw it all out, let's just admire the quality of the work here. Do you see why I wanted to replace all this now? This lot of cable goes through the cabin and out to the back of the car. I'm going to have to think about the best way to replace that. It's certainly not something you can just buy. It was a slow process, but I eventually ended up with a list of exactly what I'd need, with hopefully not too much wastage. I won't go much further here, I'll start assembling the loom once I've got the dash frame together and I can start fitting it all. But for now, I'll clean up the fuse and relay holder, it's looking pretty scabby. I de-rusted it. Cleaned it. and gave it a new zinc plate. So that's one bit done, and I'm ready to start fitting bits too when I'm ready. I had a look at why the clock doesn't work as well. It turns out the circuit board at the back of the fascia is broken. The rest of it's okay, just that one bit I could see. So, I soldered a new bit of wire on. And the clock works once again.
That's it for this episode, I'll pick this up again soon once I've got some more bits fitted to the car that I can start aiming the wiring at. But for now, thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more. And I'll catch you on the next one. See ya! Thank <laughs> you.